live shot from uh, not far where we are, just outside Centennial Square, across from our CTV News studios. A nice night to be outside, Mike. Perfect night to be yeah. doing us the news outside. I wish the news was better in sports, though. Uh, tell us more about Ryder. Yeah, Hudson, we also have some uh, Victoria Royals uh, news to tell you. But, of course, Ryder Hedgedal is the big story today. And, unfortunately, for the second straight year, Canada's wheeled men's shot at winning the Tour de France has been hampered by a crash. Ryder was involved in a major dust-up today on the sixth stage. He is now 13 minutes and 30-some-odd seconds back of the leaders. The crash was a huge crash. It happened yes, around 20 has been marred by crashes. Ryder had managed to avoid them all until today, 26 kilometers from the finish line of today's stage six. When a number of riders go down, now Ryder was among them, and when he was able to get back on his bike, his shorts were torn and his leg was scraped and bloody. He suffered a massive hematoma on his left hip and leg. And when he finished the race, Ryder was visibly upset, wasn't wanting to talk to any media, went straight to the team bus to get treatment. He was limping when he got off his bike and is banged up. Thankfully, nothing is broken. Stage wins are all that remain for Ryder to shoot for now. The entire Garmin team is decimated. Christian Vandeveld, Johan Van Samarin, a rider himself, Tom Danielson and David Miller all sustained injuries. Ryder had this to say, I got caught up in the crash like countless others and immediately realized that my left leg wasn't good. Once I got up and on a bike, I couldn't pedal with any force. The pain was too much. The team helped me get to the line, but just getting there was all I was able to do. At that point, it was just about getting to the finish. I'll work with the team medical staff tonight and try to get some rest and we'll have to go from there. I'm not sure at this point what tomorrow holds. It's the tour, so you want to do everything you can, but we have to wait and see. That was one of the worst crashes I've ever seen, and I hope everyone else who went down is okay. Other members of Team Garmin Sharp had this to say. It's the scariest crash I've ever been in. I think we were doing about 70 when it happened. I, uh, God knows how it happened. Some idiot. I'd like to see how it happened. So it, should, it just shouldn't happen like that. But once, I, I mean, once it started happening, I mean, we didn't even have a chance to really break, so we were, we were piling into each other at 60, 70 k's an hour. And uh, I was lucky, I think, and I was in this sort of almost third wave. So I started landing on guys. Thankfully, most of the damage done to Ryder was limited to the clock, but it's virtually impossible for him to make up 13 minutes on the leaders. But in the mountain stages, which start tomorrow, Ryder can climb the rankings. His friends at Trek Bike Store in Victoria West haven't given up on a top 10 finish. That, that's racing, though, um, especially road racing. Like I said, it's anything can happen, but you know, I don't think his season's over by any means. He's got the Olympics coming up, and he's won the Giro d'Italia, and maybe you go for stage wins now in the Tour, which would be big too, so. I mean, he's 13 minutes down, and 13 minutes in the mountains is nothing. I mean, guys lose half hour in the mountains, so, and he's such a strong climber that 13 minutes, he can make that up. He's, he's not gonna make it up on the overall guys, the Cadell Evans, and, but, uh, but you know, to, to finish top 10 at the Tour de France would be amazing, and, and people lose sight of that, like, you know, because he's achieved so much, like top 10's unbelievable, so. You think he can get back in the top 10? Oh yeah, he's so strong. Yeah, yeah, we got confidence in him, so. Becoming the first ever Canadian to win a Grand Tour. Well, an injection of hope is never a bad thing, and the Victoria Royals have gone out and made Cam Hope their new GM. Now, he brings with him quite a resume. He was the assistant GM for the New York Rangers under Glenn Sather. He also spent time as a player rep in the CFL. He's also been a performance driving instructor, a pro race car driver. Oh, and he's a lawyer, and Hope uh, has only one job now, and that is to bring a winning franchise here to Victoria. It really came out of left field. Uh, it wasn't something that I looked for. Uh, when Graham uh, first contacted me, I thought maybe he had me mixed up with someone. Uh, he, he, but he was persistent. Um, the first time I talked to him, it just seemed like we hit it off right away. Same philosophies, very similar vision, and uh, with the experience he had, um, it was a great success. Most of what I know about the organization comes from meeting Graham and meeting the guys, and um, it's incredibly impressive. I've seen the arena, obviously it's great, um, the city's fantastic, um, I have some ties to the city, my wife's parents are here, um, so um, everything about it just seemed to line up. And lining up a head coach is Hope's first order of business. Um, of interest. Uh, a lot of really excellent names, um, a lot of really great coaches have put their names forward. Uh, I'm not surprised. It's a great opportunity. I think it's uh, a tough job to do both coach and GM at the same time. Um, there's, there's a few examples in the league that have been very successful, but uh, you know the coach has got to separate himself from the player decisions, and there's a lot of coaches out there that prefer just to be a coach. So I think that'll also help narrow down the type of coach we can get. 
I would say within uh, a week or two weeks at the outside, uh, maybe quicker than that, just depends how things go. Royals preseason starts August 30th. Victoria Shamrocks in action tonight. Lewis Ratcliffe and the Langley Thunder are in town, and the Victoria Highlanders will play their final regular season game on Saturday. So why not come outside and enjoy the Highlanders? You betcha, my. Thank you. Hope for Ryder and hope for the Royals. Yes, exactly. All right. A lot more for you. All right, my. Thank you. All right, time for Sports Jordan's here now with more on Ryder Hedgedahl. Yeah, even the best go down in a heap sometimes, Hudson. Thank you. Ryder Hedgedahl's plan was to go where only six other cyclists had gone before, and that was to claim victory in the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France all in the same season. Today, those hopes were dashed in a scary collision in stage six. The crash was a huge crash. It happened this tour has been marred by crashes. Ryder had managed to avoid them until today 26 kilometers from the finish in stage six a number of riders go down uh, rider was among them and when he was able to get back on the bike the shorts were torn and his leg was scraped and bloodied he suffered a massive hematoma on his left hip and leg and when he finished the race rider was visibly upset don't see that too often didn't want to talk to the media and went straight to the team bus for treatment he limped off the bike uh, banged up but thankfully nothing was broken just a few minutes ago we caught up with Ryder's dad who watched the crash unfold on TV but yeah it was uh, it was just devastating because uh, this weekend would have been you know or this week coming up as well would have been prime for him a couple of hilltop finishes and uh, a time trial a rest day and then two mountain stages right would have been just perfect for him but we talked to him and said, you know, like, see what you feel like tomorrow morning. You know, if you can do it, carry on. Just, uh, you know, try to work it out. He's gone down. His focus now shifts to individual stages rather than the overall title. And Leonard says support from home goes a long way. Uh, he's inspired a lot of people. You know, people are... More and more people are watching it. I've got so many people that are so concerned now that he's not in the race, right? You know, what happened? You know, is he going to race? You know, like, it, he really needs the, the, the confidence as well now. So, you know, I think if, if people are to, you know, give him good wishes, it'll help him recover for sure. It's a proud dad right there. And, of course, uh, Ryder can be reached on Twitter. Just uh, I think it's at Ryder Hedge at all. Uh, and those messages do go a long way. And he's got to get back on the bike tomorrow. Well, you know, Bill Fry said it uh, at 5 and earlier at 6. Top 10 finish. He's strong in the mountains. That's next. And we got the Olympics to look forward to. So We do. And some, maybe there's a bright spot in there somewhere. Maybe pressure for the Olympics. Who knows? Right. But a stage win would be nice, too. All right, Jordan. Thank you. All right.